Welcome to each and every one of you. Today is the 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time and Mission Sunday in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Bob Francis said, I dream of a missionary church so that all her structures can be used for the evangelization of today's world rather than for her own self-preservation. As we join in the great prayer of the church today, let us also ponder our part in the call to mission and the evangelization of our community. Let us take a few moments of silence to prepare for the celebration. Our celebrant is our parish priest, Father Mario Dorado. Let's now join in singing our entrance hymn. Greetings of peace, joy, and love to all of you. Don't be surprised while we are wearing the white. We are on the 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time, but we decided that today also we remember all the saints in heaven and also to start also our celebration for all, remembering all our faithful departed. So you are going to see a light of a light a lot of signs here or symbols here in, the, in our altar later. So today's celebration is for 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time, then All Saints Day, and also to remember all our departed brothers and sisters. So I would like to offer also this Mass for the soul of Mr. Zeno Suarez and all the souls of our faithful departed and our loved ones who died because of COVID-19. So as one family gathered together, let us celebrate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. God has gathered us together because He loves us so much. Let us now call to mind all our sins and ask for God's mercy and for his wonderful forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we, we glorify, glorify you, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Lord Heavenly King, King, O God, Lord Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only, only begotten Son, Son Lord God, Lord Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, to the prayers of so many intercessors an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all the statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength. Take to heart these words, which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response to the psalm is, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength, my God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Saviour, you who gave great victories to your King and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him since he lives forever 
to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priest, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priest. But the word of the oath which was taken after the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The Word of the Lord Please stand for the Gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard the religious authorities disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have tr truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbors as yourself. This is much more important than all who burn offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw this, the scribe answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask Jesus any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, we heard from the Gospel on this Sunday that one of the scribes approached Jesus and asked him a question, which commandment is the first or the greatest? And Jesus answered him, love God with all your heart, with all your minds and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. And the scribes was satisfied and contented of what Jesus answered him. And Jesus told him that you are not far from the kingdom of God. Yes, my brothers and sisters, from the answer of our Lord Jesus Christ tells us that Jesus Christ did not enumerate the Ten Commandments and prioritize which is the first from which from of these commandments. But he went directly to the foundation of all the commandments, no other than love of God and love of neighbor. That is love, which is a life-giving love. Love that is life-giving. So that let us try to reflect on this, how God is really, or how God has given us that kind of love, or has loved us with that kind of love, which is a life-giving love. From the God, from the answer of our Lord Jesus Christ to this uh, scribe tells us 
that there are two components or elements of a love that is life-giving. First element is that of loving God. And this loving of God has to be reflected in on our love for our neighbors. So that these uh, two dimensions of Christian love is being symbolized by the cross, that of the vertical piece of wood symbolizes to us that of loving God, while the horizontal piece of wood symbolizes to us that social dimension of Christian love, no other than loving our neighbors. So that these two elements of Christian love, which is reflected in the cross, being the sign, living sign and emblem of Christian love, is no other than or tells us that we can differentiate what is of love for God and love from that of love for our neighbors. But these two realities are two inseparable realities. They, can, they have to go together. Though they are separate realities, but two inseparable ones because, as we heard from St. John, tells us that if you claim that you love God whom you don't see, and you don't love your neighbor whom you see, you are a liar. And it is also on the cross where our Lord Jesus Christ had shown this life or love that is life-giving, that is loving of God, that is his total obedience of the Father, and of offering himself on the cross, not of any sin for himself because he has no sin, but for the sake of the sinful humanity, the sins of the sinful humanity for others. So that it is here, my brothers and sisters, on the cross where our Lord Jesus Christ had realized and concretized his love in total obedience to the Father and for us, the sinful humanity. So what should be the characteristic of this Christian love? Brothers and sisters, it has to be animated by the apostolic zeal and mindedness. And what is this? It, that this or our act of loving should enable the others or the recipient of this quality of love into a full realization that despite of who she is and she is, he is or she is also loved by God. And who should be the recipients of this quality of love? From the gospel tells us that our neighbors, and who should be our neighbors? The first recipients of this quality of love, my brothers and sisters, should be no other than our families, our own families. Because there is an old saying that tells us, charity begins at home. So this coming Monday, as Father Mario had said, we are celebrating the All Saints Day, Solemnity of All Saints Day. They are the examples for us of how this heroic love has been shown to us by them. They were uh, ordinary people who lived extraordinarily in loving God and loving our neighbors. Some of them, of course, suffered for the sake of loving God and our neighbor. But there are also some of them who, who merited that uh, stigmata while they were still alive here on earth. So they are our heroic examples on how to realize and concretize this love that is life-giving, loving God that is to be reflected in loving our neighbors. And on the second day of November, we are also celebrating the commemorating All Souls Day. And what is this all about? My brothers and sisters, this is a reminder to all of us. One of the articles of our credal faith that is integral to our Christian faith, that is no other than communion with the saints in heaven. 
But before going to this, I have to remind you that saints or anyone who is in heaven is a saint. Though they are not officially known by the church as saints. Because they are now meriting the fullness of grace of being with God in heaven. So anyone who shares the gift of being in heaven is a saint. Even though they are not officially known by the church as saints. So that this communion with the saints in heaven, or, yeah, it reflects or is being shown in our communion with all our deceased loved ones, departed loved ones. Even though they have gone ahead of us already, we are still in communion with them and they are still in communion with us. In different realms, they know what we are doing for them and on our part, we can still continue doing all those expressions of our love for them. So we are remembering them because of their love for us that we are now also enjoying life that they have enjoyed when they were yet with us. So this communion that we have with them is so powerful that no power of death can destroy it. So that this extends, uh, since we do not know who is in heaven and who are not there, we are, this communion with the saints in heaven is extended to all our departed loved ones. They are still one with us and we are still one with them. So that this uh, celebration of All Souls Day is a reminder for us to renew that kind of commitment that we are still in communion with them and that we are, can still do all those expressions of our communion with them, of our love for them, when they were yet with us. And like, for example, our prayers, offering of the holy masses, acts of sacrifices, good works that we are offering for them. And nothing is wasted with all of these acts of sacrifices, good works, and prayers that we are offering for them. Because if they are still in that state of purgatory, which we call, which we all undergo to such a state of purification because of the imperfections of our love while we are still on earth. But technically, all those who are suffering in purgatory have no other destiny but heaven. Only that, they are not yet uh, enjoying the fullness or the, of the bliss or the grace of being in heaven. So that those who are cleansed in heaven cannot help those who are in purgatory. And it is we who are still uh, in our pilgrimage journey who can push them to heaven. Because those who are cleansed in heaven cannot go to the state where there is still that element of defilement because of the imperfections of love. So that it is only we who are still alive can help those who are in purgatory so that they will also attain the fullness of life in heaven. So nothing is wasted with all these acts of sacrifices that we are doing for them because if they are already in heaven, they don't need our prayers already. But as I've told you, they are also sharing the grace of being saints. Like the saints, they have now the power to intercede for us from the source of life, no other than God, God himself. So that like all the saints in heaven, they can bounce, they have the power to bounce back to us the fruits of our sacrifices, our prayers for them. So brothers and sisters, we continue remembering them because of their good works, because of their love, good memories that we have with them, and their love when they were yet with us, and now that they are also gone ahead of us, we can still continue doing all those expressions of our communion with them when they were yet with us. So may this celebration of this Holy Mass, or we remember all our departed loved ones, and in this Holy Mass, we pray for one another that we will be renewed from the, that kind of commitment, that kind of belief 
that we are still in communion with them, though they have gone ahead of us already. So may we have the grace to continue living our faith, especially in our pilgrimage journey, being in communion with the saints in heaven with our all our departed loved ones. Brothers and sisters, let us now have our proclamation of faith as we all pray together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Father reveals the mysteries of the kingdom to the little ones. So let us pray to our God who shows such love for small and simple people. So we bring all our needs before our Heavenly Father confident of his loving care. Your response to every invocation will be, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, that we participate in the synod and journey as companions, side by side with one another on the same road. We pray to the Lord for leaders of nations that they ensure people of different religions are able to live freely without discrimination in their countries. We pray to the Lord For young people, that in difficult times they retain a vibrant hope for the future, be touched by God's immense love, have wise people to walk beside them and seek a spirituality centered in Christ. We pray to the Lord. For priests, religious and lay people who minister in foreign lands, that they will be supported by people in their homelands, compassionate in their missionary work and faithful in their response to the call of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, let us recognize that through baptism, we too are blessed to be your missionaries. We pray that through the example of our lives, our faith and our love of neighbor, we may be lights that shine in the darkness and give true witness to your love and goodness. We pray to the Lord. 
On this Mission Sunday, we ask God to bless all our missionaries who have dedicated their lives to spreading his message of love and salvation throughout the world. We pray also for the families who nurtured them, the missionary families that support them, and for all those communities abroad who have received and welcomed them. We pray to the Lord. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, make us wise with your wisdom and help us follow you in the humble way you have shown us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of His name for our good and for all His holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints by be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift you up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good examples. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of pain. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inher an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with your saints Dominic and Saint Francis and all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation with you, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Patrick, and Michael, our bishops, and the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through christ our lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen, Amen. 
Now, with the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Sisters and brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should should enter enter under under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you again to Father Severino for this nice sharing for us, his homily. And we are being reminded that as we love our neighbors, remember that we have three, uh, in our simple catechism, we have the three, I don't know how you call that one, division or groups of people. We call them the uh, Pilgrim Church, all of us who are still in pilgrimage here on earth. The one, the suffering church, which is what he was called there in the purgatory. And we have the triumphant church, which all the heavenly hosts or the heavenly sa- the saints in heaven. And if you have heard him correctly, it was nice that our prayers are not wasted. And it is nice that as I ask our uh, cameraman there uh, the, to give us the opportunity to show to you For those of you people here in our parish who are now listening and watching in your television. So, starting this month of November, starting tomorrow, okay, November 1, if you will pass by the church, I will ask, I would like to ask Irai and also Joseph that you could get a copy of this paper from them, okay? And during this whole month of November, we are going to 
put these names, all the names of our departed brothers and sisters, to this box here. And it will be collected day by day, and just ask the copy from them or from me of this kind of paper. Okay? And this is where you are going to write all the names of your uh, departed brothers and sisters, all your loved ones. And for the whole month of November, we are going to pray for all of them here. And if you notice that there are names of people here in each one of this candle. These are the people who died from November 2020 up to uh, December, October 2021. And we are going to have a special celebration on one Sunday of November before Christ the King to uh, celebrate all these people. I know you cannot come to this church, but we will try our very best to light all these candles in one Sunday, maybe before Christ the King, to remember those people, uh, our uh, parts of our parish, that we will pray for all of them, special, special celebration for this month of November to remember them. And all of them, they are all listed here. Uh, ben C is going to show them to you in, the, in our live stream mass. And if we have forgotten somebody, just tell me or text me or tell Eri or Joseph. And we will include them all here in our list of all the departed brothers and sisters from November 2020 up to, December, up to the October 2021. Okay. So, sisters and brothers, I know, uh, I am so, we are so grateful that me and Padre Severino, we have uh, received a lot of good comments and inspiration from all our parishioners. Thank you for listening to our live stream masses. Thank you for your uh, words of appreciation and words of encouragement. I hope we will, we hope that we will be able to continue what we are doing here for the sake of those people, especially those who cannot come to the church at this point in time. So, sisters and brothers, before I give to you my um, uh, little takeaway, please join me to have the prayer during this, kind of, this time of pandemic and the prayer for healing. Lord Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid during this time of pandemic that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength. May those who have died from the virus rest in peace and through your mercy rise in glory. Be with the loved ones of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, protect them from illness and despair. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations Give them the foresight to act with prudence and charity for the well-being of the people they are called to serve. Stay with us, Lord, and grant us your peace. Amen. Lord, you invite all who are burdened to come to you. Allow your healing hand to heal me. Touch my soul with your compassion for others. Touch my heart with your courage and infinite love for all. Touch my mind with your wisdom, and may my mouth always proclaim your praise. Teach me to reach out to you in all my needs, and help me to lead others to you by my example. Most loving heart of Jesus, bring me health in body and spirit, that I may serve you with all my strength. Touch gently this life, which you have created now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so for my little takeaway, since we belong to a pilgrim church, 
We are still pilgrims in this world, as our Father Francis would say, we are all pilgrims and strangers in this world. This is not our permanent home. Our permanent home is in heaven. And we are looking forward that when the, when the time comes, we will be together also in the place where God or where Jesus has prepared for us. My little takeaway is simple. There is a story about the three pilgrims who would like to go to a place of peace, contentment, and a peace of calm and serenity. The first pilgrim, he was carrying two sacks on his way, on his pilgrimage, and then all in the sack at his back, on his back, he was carrying all the good things that he has done, all the good memories, all the beautiful moments in his life. But in front of him is another sack, which full of all the negative things, all the suffering, the sacrifices, and even all those um, um, things that are so sad, so, so painful in his life, they are all inside that sack in front of him. But as he go goes his way, that he was thinking of all the negative things that happened in his life. So his sack become um, heavier and heavier. So later on, he becomes Hans Bach. The second pilgrim, he inverted. He, instead of carrying the, all those negative, all those positive things in, at the, on his back, so he put it in his front of him. And all the negative things he put on the, on the uh, sack at his back. But the problem is, he keeps on thinking of all those uh, sad moments in his life, so the sack on his back becomes heavier and heavier. The third pilgrim, he carried two sacks and he put all those uh, beautiful moments in his life on the sack on his, in front of him. And at the back are all those uh, sacrifices, uh, um, not so good moments in his life, and all the negative things that happen in his life. He put on inside the sack on his back. But the difference between the second pilgrim and the third pilgrim, and the third pilgrim, you know, he bore a hole on the sack on his uh, the sack on his back, and then. All the sack in front of him, he make it. He make them as all his inspiration, as he gone, as he goes on on his pilgrimage. I have given this in a recollection, and you know, after the recollection, some people ask me, Father, among those three pilgrims, who are you? And you know, my answer. I experienced those three, those three pilgrims. There was, there, was, there was a time in my life that I have been concentrating on all those negative things in my life. And much more, when I uh, was diagnosed to have cancer, the more I concentrated on my sickness and everything. And I was not able to have a beautiful uh, journey in my life. But at this point in time, I am the third pilgrim. I still have so many uh, sufferings and sacrifices in my life, but I put them all at the sack at my back, but there is always a hole there. I am not worried about those things, but the good thing is those beautiful memories, those beautiful moments in my life, together with all our parishioners, even what is happening in this pandemic, it doesn't matter to me now. What counts is how we could inspire people how we could uh, emulate the lives of people, and at the same time, how we could be of help to other people. And I think as we go on with our pilgrim journey, we will not be alone. We are with one another. Sisters and brothers, thank you again for be being with us as we celebrate this uh, Sunday, All Saints Day, and also All Souls Day. May this month of this coming month of November give us all the opportunity to remember all of them. And as what Padre Severino has uh, shared with us, all our prayers will not be wasted. And they are going to help 
those people in the, who are still under uh, going on the purification. But for all our loved ones that we know they are in heaven, they are also praying, praying for us. So as we remember them, they are praying for us. So let us rejoice and thank God for his great love is without end. As the psalmist in the psalm will say, Lord, I love you because you constantly loving us and continuously pouring all the graces and blessings we need. May we be able to see each other again next Sunday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.